Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be um, a makeup video. Um, this is going to be showing you guys half of my face um, with my makeup done correctly and the other half with my makeup done incorrectly. These are just some common mistakes that I have made and that I've realized that I want to stop doing or things that I might have seen other people do or struggle with. Just a disclaimer, there is no perfect way to do your makeup. There's no right way. These are just some mistakes that I've made that don't really work for me. But if they work for you, then don't come after me. <laughs> so to start off, we're gonna do foundation. I'm gonna do, I if I can remember, I'm gonna try to do the bad side first for everything and then the good side. So first we're gonna do foundation. Um, one thing, I don't, I don't really have any dark foundations right now. But one thing to keep in mind is um, make sure that your foundation isn't too dark because it can make you look orange. But another tip is don't put a ton of foundation on your face like I'm doing right now. Um, this is way too much and it will look cakey. Um, so even if you're trying to cover up a lot of things, um, if you pack on too much it will look really thick and cakey. There are other ways to cover up. Um, blemishes or um, other imperfections on your face. So another common mistake is um, people will grab a beauty blender, this one's kind of dirty, but people will grab a beauty blender and start dragging it down their face and one that's not good for your skin because it's pulling your skin down and you really don't want to do that because it's not good for um, your face but um, you're also then just creating drag marks on your face and you're not creating uh, an airbrushed look which you can normally um, achieve with a beauty blender. So I'm just gonna drag it down and do it the wrong way, drag it and then stop right along here. I'm not gonna go past my jawline. And we're just gonna keep dragging everywhere. And also, um, something that I like to avoid is putting foundation right here because you're already going to cover it with concealer and so if you layer on foundation and concealer and powder, it's going to look really heavy. And so I try to use um, as little product as I possibly can in this area. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you guys can tell on camera, but I can tell in person. Um, that there are like drag marks, it doesn't look very even, it looks cakey because I used a ton of foundation. For the good side, I'm going to take just the right amount of foundation. If you put too much around your nose, then it's going to look really cakey and you'll get crease marks and stuff. So then what you want to do with your beauty blender is you want to make sure it's damp. Um, I had to get it damp for this video so I couldn't show you dragging it with a dry beauty blender. But um, you want to make sure your beauty blender is damp whenever you're applying your foundation. Otherwise the foundation will just soak immediately up into your beauty blender and you'll lose a lot of product that way and it won't be an airbrush finish whenever you're applying it that way. So what you want to do is you want to... Just tap it and you want to make sure that you get back by your ear and by your hairline and you also want to make sure that you drag it down your neck so that your neck and your face match. This is something I've been guilty of for such a long time was just being lazy and not taking it down my neck and then I like go somewhere after I did my makeup in the morning and um, you can totally tell that I have like a line here and that's that's kind of whenever I didn't apply it down my neck here that's what you'll see eventually is you'll see um, a foundation orange line and that is not what you're going for. So just tapping away. And again, I'm trying to avoid this section so then I don't apply too much product in this area. Now for concealer, a big mistake that I have seen or that I have done is putting um, too light of a foundation on and putting it everywhere. I don't have the super light foundation. I'm super pale right now. And so there's they just don't make concealer that's too light for me right now. <laughs> um, but putting way too much concealer on will really make your under eyes look cakey and it will do the opposite effect 
um, you're wanting to brighten and lighten underneath your eyes and that will just make it um, really cakey. So I'm going to drag again with my beauty blender because you're not supposed to do that. Just drag. And on the correct side, I'm going to dab it in and then I'm also going to take a little bit up on my eye to act as a primer. Um, I find that this really helps me because I have, I tend to have some discoloration on my eyelid and so putting some concealer on really helps to make sure that I have a good base whenever I'm putting my eyeshadow on. Okay, the next thing is powder. Um, it is super important to powder after you have um, applied any kind of concealer because it's really tacky. And so on this side, I'm not gonna apply any and maybe by the end you'll be able to tell that it'll start to crease. Um, but on this side, I'm gonna powder underneath my eyes and on top of my eyes too because I put some concealer there. And then I'm also very lightly going to, I'm going to take a bigger brush and just lightly put a little bit of powder on my face. Now on this other side, I'm going to go crazy with powder on my face, which you really just need a little bit to make sure that you can control your oil. And whenever you, oof, and whenever you apply too much, it can make your foundation look really, really cakey. It can also make you have like kind of a white cast on your face if you're using a light powder. And that is definitely not what we're going for. Okay, so we're gonna go into contouring. Um, a big mistake that um, I have tended to make in the past is putting my contour too low. So a lot of times people will tell you to go like this and then go right where the line is. And as you can tell, this is really low on my face and so it doesn't raise my cheekbones at all. It just makes my face look a little bit dirty. <laughs> so this is another mistake I see people making, um, and myself included, um, doing a C on your face. A lot of times people will tell you to make a C and that's not correct because then you'll you'll fill in this part right here which will make it darken your face too much and then putting it right above your brow makes it look like your face is super sunken in right here and so they have kind of the right idea but it's just a little bit misplaced. So on this side I'm going to show you where you should correctly place it. So if you suck in your cheeks you want to go above where the line is. You want to start kind of right here where um, your sideburns are, I guess, and go underneath. You can see your cheeks right here whenever you're smiling. You just kind of want to go underneath because there naturally is a shadow underneath your cheekbone, but you don't want to go really hard down here. As you can tell, this really helps to raise my cheekbones on this side versus this side. It looks really low. Another thing that um, I hear a lot of people say with the C is you want to curve your contour to sort of follow your bone. And again, it's the right idea, but it's just not doing it correctly. What you'd probably want to do instead is do more of a straight line, and that will make your face look a lot more slender. Whereas if you're curving it, you're really rounding your face. So whenever you do a straight line, it looks a lot more slender and kind of more of what you're probably going for. Then as you get up onto your forehead, you don't want to shade in right here because that makes your face look weird. Um, you just want to go up into your, right next to your hairline. You don't want to go down above your brow. You want to go up here to make your face look more slender. You're really kind of going for an oval shape and if you make a C, that makes you look like a circle and whenever you go up here and you do more of a straight line that's angled, you will get more of um, a slender looking face. The next thing is nose contour. On this side, I'm going to contour really um, on the side of my nose, right there. This will be kind of hard to tell because you won't be able to get the full effect. Um, with me doing it correctly on this side. But starting off on this side, I'm gonna blend that out a little bit. 
but if I really put it on the side of my nose, um, as you can tell, it makes this part of my nose look way wider than it is, and so it makes my nose look bigger, and nobody wants to feel like they have a big nose. <laughs> And so what you'd want to do instead, and also I, I went a little heavy and you really don't want to go heavy with your nose contour. What you want to do instead is take um, a brush with just a little bit on and maybe go a little bit further in than where your actual um, side of your nose is. And just lightly go down, back and forth a little bit. And again, I don't know if you'll be able to tell because I did it incorrectly on this side, but on this side, um, my nose looks a lot slender, if that's even a word. And now for blush, for the incorrect side, I'm just going to go a little bit crazy, not too crazy. Putting it high up here, and putting too much. As you can see, it's like more focused way up here. Ideally where you'd want the blush to go is on the apples of your cheeks. And so I'm just going to take a little bit and lightly put it on um, a mistake, another mistake with blush. Because it's so pigmented a lot of times, if you just cram your brush in there and then you swipe it on, you're going to get a lot of blush and you don't want to accidentally get a lot of blush on your face because it's really hard to get off. And so um, start with a really light hand and um, don't go too far back or or too far up or anything. Just really focus more on the apples of your cheeks. Next for highlighter, um, I'm gonna take um, a brush like this and I'm gonna dip it into my highlight. And then I am gonna put it right, I'm gonna smile and just stick it right there. And kind of put a lot on, I don't know if you can tell. So your goal with highlighter is to lighten up the tops of your cheeks and kind of highlight the best part of your face. And if you are to stick it right here on your cheek, um, that's really going to highlight, I don't know if you guys can tell on camera, but in person I can see all of the, um, all of my pores and all of the texture that is on my face. And so what you want to do instead is just lightly go right above your cheekbone. Just give it enough so that it'll shine if you turn your head, but not enough that you'll be able to see all of the texture on your skin. Another mistake that I see with highlighter, especially because I'm fair skin and I have done this before, is taking a highlight that is too dark for you. And what it does is it looks like a streak of gray or whatever undertone you have. So I'm taking, this is kind of like a gold highlight that is definitely too dark for me. And I am just sticking it right here on my cheek. And as you can tell, whenever I'm looking at the camera straight on, you can see that there is kind of a muddy line right here. So I have contour down here, and then some blush, and then um, a dark streak. So unless I catch it in the light, um, it looks really dark. So again, that's one of my tips. Just make sure that you find a highlight that is lighter than your skin so that it will be able to brighten up um, and feature the prettiest parts of your face. Um, for the correct side, I'm also going to take some highlight and I'm just going to stick it right here on my nose um, and then try to get on one side um, and put it down my nose. And this really helps again to make your nose look more narrow. And then I'm also going to put on my Cupid's bow. Also, if you're wanting a lot of highlight, what you can do is you can take a little bit and dust it right here on your face. And that way, whenever you turn your head, it'll sort of catch that bone and make you look a little bit more slender as well. Um, next, for bronzer, um, a lot of times people, and this is myself included with all of these things, um, don't know how to use bronzer. Um, they think that bronzer and contour are the same thing, but contour is normally more cool toned and bronzer is more um, colorful and it's supposed to bring color to your skin. And so a lot of people will just stick bronzer right where their contour is and it kind of defeats the purpose of having contour. So then just they'll take it all over their face and the, the correct way of using bronzer is actually focusing a little bit more higher than where your um, contour was 
and that way it just warms up the skin a little bit and um, it kind of transitions from cool tone to warm and then to um, your blush and then to the highlight. So it's a really good way to add warmth and color to the skin if it's used correctly. Something else that I like to do is I like to take um, some contour and just take it down my chin a little bit and underneath my neck. That way I get a little bit more definition and everything matches a little bit more. So next we're going to talk about brows. Again, everybody has their own preference and this is just what I personally like for myself and um, maybe I've seen a few people that maybe could have benefited from um, some of this advice. But um, I, especially whenever the bolder brows started coming back, I didn't know how you're supposed to do it and so you just kind of go for it. One of the big mistakes I see is people grabbing a color that's too dark and just going for it right away, right here. And really making kind of a block right here. And almost redrawing the brow instead of just going with the natural shape and flow of your eyebrows. And then also making a really pronounced arch with your um, color. And again, like it doesn't, it doesn't look horrible. It's a little bit exaggerated right now just so that you can get the point. It doesn't look awful, but it looks kind of fake for me. And I really like my brows to look super duper natural. So what I normally do is brush my brows and then I take a color that's around the same color of my brows or maybe even a little bit lighter. And then I take my brush and I start here on the arch and um, I sort of shape the arch the way that I want it to. Especially um, this eyebrow gives me a lot of trouble. <laughs> so then I will just sort of follow, oh there's a dang train. <laughs> I will follow the natural um, way that my brow goes and focus the darkest part right here, not right up front. So then I just try to create hair-like strokes right around here and not put too much color in. To me, especially in person, it makes a huge difference just um, going with where your, your brows naturally go and maybe filling in a few blank spots or, and actually like reshaping your brow and making it look um, super defined. Okay, now we're going to move on to eyeshadow. Normally what you want to do with your eyeshadow is you want to give it a good matte base and then um, transition it down to the darker colors that you want and then add some shimmer later if you would like some shimmer. So with the dark side, I'm just going to go straight into my crease with the dark color. I mean, it, again, it's up to everybody and like sometimes you're going for a different style, but uh, normally it is harder to get it blended out better if you don't have a good transition shade. Oh, and also we didn't put any um, primer down on this eye and so it's going to be especially hard to get even pigmentation and blend everything out. So um, the other mistake that I see often with myself and with others is taking the dark color up way too high and not giving yourself enough space for um, highlight. So taking the color up really high and then not taking enough time to blend it properly. And then also another mistake that I see is taking a shimmery shade and sticking that in the crease as well. So as you can tell, I have some shimmer in my crease. And the reason that it's not good to have shimmer in your crease is it makes your eyes look especially wrinkly. Adding shimmer to um, textured skin can really emphasize any imperfections and so you really want to mattify this area and then put shimmer on your lid where there isn't a crease. Also normally what I'll do is I will put a highlight right here and under my brow bone but I'm going to leave that out this time. Another mistake that I used to make a lot was um, tight lining without any other color on the lower lash line. 
Lining the waterline is not a bad thing, but it can really make your eyes look closed off if you don't do it the right way. And so what I did was I just took the color and I went all the way up in here. Especially whenever you use a really dark color, that can really start to close off the eye right here and you want this area to be very open. Again, tight lining isn't bad. But there are ways of making sure that it is adding to your look and not making your eyes look smaller. Alright, now for the correct eye, I am going to take um, a light transition shade and I am going to take it on a fluffy crease brush and blend it into my crease. And again, because we put concealer on this eye, um, it really helps to give us an even base as we're adding more color to it. Then I'm going to take a darker shade and go back into the crease to deepen it up a little bit. Now on a smaller crease brush, I'm going to take a darker color and I'm going to focus it on the outer corner and really work on blending it out um, and taking it a little bit up into the crease but mostly focusing it in the outer corner. So as you can tell just by looking at my eyes so far, this one looks way more blended and it's not even that I took that much extra time blending, it was just easier too because I had um, transition shades up here and then I was a lot more careful with where I put the dark shade and I blended it out more. Um, versus this side, it just kind of looks like a, a mess. It's not horrible, but it just looks a little bit messy and sloppy. And again on this side, because I had the shimmer shade, you can also see a lot of the texture on my eye. Um, I am going to take a shimmery shade and put it on this eye so you can see how to make it look um, really pretty. I'm just going to take my finger and dip it into a shimmer shade and lightly pat it on right here, just on the lid. And as you can see, you get the same effect, it just looks a little bit more put together. And I'm also going to dip into a highlight and I... I'm going to put this on the inner corner of my eye to really brighten things up. And I'm also going to take um, a highlight shade and put it under my brow so that it will highlight under my brow bone. Now I'm going to grab a smudging brush and I'm going to um, do the lower lash line. So I'm going to take um, a brown, because we're kind of going with a brownish red kind of thing today. And I'm going to start back here. And I'm just going to drag it back and forth. Sorry, there's another train. There's like a million trains that come through our town all the time. I wake up at like 2 o'clock every morning because of a train. <laughs> so again, you're just going to smudge it out and not take it too far in, but um, give it enough color so that there's some definition there. And as you can tell, my eyes already look way more open on this side than on this side. And you can even take um, an eyeliner and tight line a little bit. If you like to tight line. And just put it on the outer part to um, deepen up your liner. So you can add some tight lining right here. Just don't take it quite as far and it will make your eyes still look open. But you can kind of get the deepness that you're trying to get on this side. Next we're going to do eyeliner. So on the bad side, um, I am just going to start right here. I need a mirror. Oh. We're going to start right at the beginning of my eye. And create a thick line. And then just a little wing. So I'm going to get really close so that you guys can see. <laughs> I made the line really thick right here and then as I came out I kind of got a little bit thinner and then just did a little wing that's kind of flicked up. And that can really make your eyes look small and like they're drooping off down here instead of lifting it up with the rest of your face. It can make your face look kind of sunken. So I'm going to show you how I do my eyeliner on this side. You can still get a very dramatic look without um, having a really thick line. So first we're going to start out by doing a wing instead of just going for the line. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so on this side, I was still able to achieve a very dramatic eyeliner look without it making my eyes look smaller. On this side, comparing it, you can see that um, the eyeliner being really thick right here and not thick out here makes my eyes look skinnier than they are and not as almond shaped and you're kind of going for an almond shape with your eyes whenever you do your makeup. Also as you can tell I, I stopped my eyeliner probably right about there and with this one I took it all the way in and again it goes with the lighting thing. You're really closing off your eyes whenever you take your eyeliner all the way in. Next we're going to go in with mascara. Um, a tip that I have um, if you're a girl who likes to look a little bit more natural or if you're blonde and you don't want to have black eyeliner and black mascara, you can use a brown mascara. You just want to make sure that whatever mascara you're using is darker than the eyeliner that you're using. That way your eyelashes don't stand out against um, your liner in a bad way. So I'm going to take this brown mascara and I'm not going to go at the root, I'm just going to focus on the tips and drag it up. Okay, so as you can tell, I spent a lot of time putting that on and you still really can't you can't see that well that I'm wearing mascara. On the bottom, um, I put some so you can see. This is good mascara, and it normally works really well, but because it is lighter than everything else that I'm using, you can't, they don't stand out against anything else. So what you want to do is you want to go for um, a, a darker mascara, and you also want to make sure that you are starting at the base of your lashes and dragging it all the way out. Um, and another way that you can kind of avoid clumps is by doing a zigzag pattern. So I'll show you kind of what I mean by that. I'm just gonna kind of zigzag as you're going. So as you guys can see, on this side you can really tell that I've got some good lashes going. And on this side, because it's darker and because I didn't start at the root and get a lot of volume to start with, um, you can't really tell that I have good lashes. You can also see what a difference it makes to have some eyeshadow on your lower lash line. It really makes your eyes look bigger and brighter, whereas right here it just kind of looks not very exciting. Um, so those are my tricks for my eyes. Um, the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk about lips. So normally whenever you put on lipstick, you're going to grab um, a lip pencil to line your lips. So I'm going to do that on the bad side. I'm going to show you kind of what I have done in the past and what I've seen other people do. So slightly overlining is a trick that a lot of people like to use to make their lips look bigger. And how you're supposed to do that is you're supposed to overline um, right here at the part where you want your lips to look the biggest. And then you don't want to overline as you get out here. And as you can see, um, I overlined at the top and the bottom, but then I kept overlining. And so you can see it makes my mouth look really long and really skinny and that's not really what you're looking for with lips. So I'll show you the correct way to overline your lips. So as you can see on this side, my lips look a lot more fuller right here and they still look narrow whenever you get to the point. It doesn't look like 
I put too much lipstick on. Another thing that I did on this side was I not only lined my lips, but I also shaded it in a little bit. I didn't go all the way in because it's nice to have a little bit of brightness on the inner part of your lips um, if you want to get kind of an ombre look. But um, just straight up lining your lips and then leaving it can make your lips look a little bit more dramatic than maybe what you were hoping to go for. So for my lip color, I'm just gonna take a light lippy stick. So I'm gonna show you both sides of my face. I'm gonna show you um, the not so good side first. And as you can tell, it's not, like nobody would look at me and think, oh, she looks horrible or she did her makeup horribly. But there are just a few things where it's like, if you just took a little bit more time and um, paid a little bit more attention to detail, you can look really good with the same products, with the same everything. Um, so now I'm gonna show you the good side. I've always really liked watching videos like this because nobody, nobody's gonna look at this side of my face and think, wow, she did a horrible job with her makeup and she looks really ugly and everything like that. Nobody's gonna think that. And this side is even a little bit more exaggerated um, with some of the mistakes so that you can see it better on camera. But it's just, um, there are a few things that you can do, like on this side, um, that really make your makeup stand out and it makes it look a lot better. Um, if you just spent a little bit more time and um, paid a little bit more attention to detail. A lot of these mistakes just come from not knowing um, where things should go or what products you should use or what applicator or how you should apply things. At least for me, not a lot of it was done on purpose. So I hope that this video is helpful to you guys who wanted to find small ways to improve your makeup or maybe pick up on a mistake that you're making that um, you can easily improve. I had so much fun making this video. I love watching tips and tricks videos and so I hope that you guys like this video. Um, hit the like button below if you liked it and subscribe so that you can know whenever I post another video and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!